And welcome back. In this segment, we continue our look at impeachment, but specifically we focus on the politics of it all, both with a likely Senate trial and its impact on the 2020 campaign. As you know, lots of Democrats, including Speaker Nancy Pelosi, they want impeachment to move and move quickly. But with new stories this weekend about Devin Nunes going to Ukraine last winter, getting help from Rudy Giuliani's now indicted buddies, and those questions about Ukraine's military aid and Mick Mulvaney, the chief of staff of the president here, scrambling to justify the move after the fact, a lot of people now think it's wise to slow the roll down and let this process play out. But there's also questions about the pelosi led effort to change the charges against the president from abuse of power or quid pro quo with Ukraine to just calling it pure and simple bribery. It is an impeachable offense listed in the Constitution. Opinion pieces like this one from Noah Rothman say the move to bribery is a mistake since even though bribery is easy for the public to digest, especially given that it's specified, as I said, in the Constitution, it doesn't accurately reflect the facts or all of them, at least of this case, something Republicans and the president's apologists will likely seize on. Then there's the polling, which may suggest the impeachment hearings have actually hurt Democrats, maybe. A new poll of voters in Wisconsin, perhaps the key swing state in 2020, shows that even though a majority of voters there think that Trump did ask Ukraine to investigate his political rivals, Trump's numbers, they're improving. More people, they think he should not be removed from the job now. And that same poll shows that Trump is actually gaining ground on every Democratic rival in a hypothetical heads-up match, improving so much that Trump now beats every Democrat in Wisconsin. Again, that's at least in this poll. I should mention a Huffington Post poll on impeachment shows no change in Trump's numbers, at least on the national level. And for more on the politics of impeachment, we turn to Brad Miller. Brad was a five-term Democrat who represented North Carolina in Congress until 2013. He's now with a law firm that focuses on whistleblower protections. Congressman, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the time. And, you know, I think for a lot of people, and maybe, you know, like that uh, famous movie, He Had Me at Hello, that, you know, from everything that I've gone through in the last three years, I was predisposed to believe the president wasn't just capable of it. But after hearing all the testimony, it only confirmed the worst suspicions. However, even if we can agree that Adam Schiff did a good job, the witnesses were compelling, the facts seemed to confirm, reconfirm, and reconfirm again that this happened. And the founders even said that this was, by definition, one of the examples of a high crime and a misdemeanor, that it's not working, at least as of yet. There's no pathway that 20 Republican senators would join with every Democrat in the Senate and at least if you believe the polls, America is as conflicted as, as they were when they started. Do Democrats have the right strategy now, or would you advise them to go in a different way? Well, I'm not sure if it matters if it's called um, bribery or something else. Uh, the Constitution uh, allows for impeachment to pry away from the levers of power uh, someone, uh, a president who is using the powers of the presidency to benefit themselves at the expense of the, of the country. And there is overwhelming evidence that, uh, that Trump did just that. Uh, I don't always agree with Peggy Noonan, but I agreed with her column last week that said what you never hear in this debate is, I can't believe that Trump did this. It would be so out of character. Uh, I think every American knows this is exactly the kind of thing he would do. Uh, but I think part of impeachment also is uh, is this something important enough uh, to remove a president? Uh, but I think the nation is evenly divided. There's almost nothing that's going to happen now uh, after the evidence of last week. And the question is what to do. Um, I do think Democrats should move forward. I think, I think that uh, the House and the Senate should move forward and show that this is not acceptable behavior. This is not who we are now, uh, even if it does eventually result in an acquittal in the Senate. You know, I think it would take a lot to surprise almost anybody, but I'm curious from your perspective, this weekend, if you watch the Sunday shows, the usual suspects show up, but at one point um, on Fox, you had uh, Senator Kennedy from Louisiana, and before anybody cast person, this is a guy who went to Oxford, okay, and Chris Wallace asks him pretty directly, who got involved with Ukraine? I want folks to hear this exchange. Senator Kennedy, who do you believe was responsible for hacking the DNC and Clinton campaign computers, their emails? Was it Russia or Ukraine? I don't know. 
nor do you, nor do any of us. Uh, Ms. Hill, uh, well, I mean, let me just, let me just interrupt to say the entire intelligence community says it was Russia. Th right, but it could also be Ukraine. I'm not saying that I know one way or the other. So here's my question to you. As they say, you were there when you go in the cloakroom where the cameras and C-SPAN's not running, and you know these folks, especially after five terms there. Do they really believe that, or is the political box they're in that if they cross this president um, once, they're looking at a primary, what's driving them to, I'm not saying take a courageous political stand, every intelligence agency, you were in front of late, you know this, everybody says the Russians did it and they're going to do it again. Why are we going to bat, especially when you don't have to go on a limb? You just have to repeat what CIA, AF, every intelligence agency is already telling us. Uh, there is no doubt that all of the evidence is one way, but people choose to believe or at least say they believe something else. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that impeachment is going to help with that, but we still need to do it. Uh, to say that this is not what we expect of the president, that, that we have a rule of law uh, and the president cannot use his office for his own self-enrichment this way. You don't see any world. I mean, I'm saying, Congressman, they have video and audio of the president saying, I could give two figs about, you know, uh, corruption in Ukraine. I want dirt on Biden. They ain't getting the money until they show it. If we play that, like I said, in high-definition video with the audio to match, do you think there's any members in the House, let alone in the Senate, that would say that's a bridge too far? Probably not. I think the last hope was Will Hurd, and he's pretty well said, a, a Republican who's not running for re-election, who was thought to be independent-minded, a former CIA operative, I think, uh, who said that he just doesn't think this rises to the level of impeachment. Uh, I, I would be very surprised if we get anyone, any Republican, if, you, if you're not counting Justin Amash as the Republican anymore, uh, that you're going to get any Republican votes. Now, at the risk of going to crazy town, and I mean this is a serious question, if the president literally, and we know this to be true, the day that the Mueller reports out, the following day, he has that phone call with the Ukrainian President Zelensky, yeah. and we know the contents of it. If there's no punishment for this, without being Pollyannish, for the health of our republic going forward, is there any line? To think that he's this one-time thing that will never happen again, Republican or Democrat for that matter, I thought you guys in the Congress, I say you guys in the past tense, you were supposed to be the check and balance. We were supposed to have a co-equal branch of government. What if Trump turns around, loses in November, and says, you know what, there was massive voter fraud, I don't recognize the results of the election. Would they still follow him at that point? I mean, I don't know where this ends, Congressman. I don't think it's going to go that far. I think we have seen that uh, too many people in our law enforcement establishment, our intelligence establishment, in our military, um, and really, uh, they're over Trump. Uh, they're not going to follow an order from Trump that is clearly contrary to the law. Uh, they're not going to go dissolve Congress and, and see CNN uh, or RNN. Uh, that's just not going to happen. Uh, but the Republican base the Republic, and Republican politicians who need Republican primary votes uh, are just not going to take them on. Uh, and I'm very worried about how we come out of this, how badly divided we will be coming out of this. Congressman, I appreciate the time, and thank you so much for yours. Thank you. And when we come back, the Supreme Court. It will play a huge part in the impeachment process in a multiple of ways. They're making decisions right now about what cases they will and won't hear as it relates to everything from the president's taxes to even deciding whether or not to actually mandate people to show up if they have subpoenas. And what of the health of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? We'll get into all that. Plus, Chief Justice Roberts will be the judge in the Supreme Court case. Stay with us.